Hi, Cameron. It's great to see you again. How was your week? It was great. I feel like things are finally clicking, and I'm so glad to see that I was able to lose a pound this week. That's really great. I'm glad to see that your hard work is paid off this week. What do you think enabled you to achieve that weight change this week? Well, after our last two sessions, we talked about the importance of monitoring and accurately and completely. I was using the Nutrition Facts label to um, determine what my serving sizes were, and then I was measuring, counting, weighing, what have you, um, and making sure that I was writing everything in my habit book before I ate so I could see my progress through the day. Um, I used the meal plan we created on some days, and when that didn't work out, I found that Looking at the Nutrition Facts label really helped me to make sure that a um, food might fit and it helped me to stop and think about what I was eating and how they might fit into my day. So for instance, did you know that a mall Cinnabon has 800 calories? That is breakfast, lunch, and a snack all rolled into one and totally not worth it. Well Cameron, you just described a red food. It sounds like you are ready to incorporate the traffic light plan into your meal plans and monitoring as well. So the purpose of the traffic light plan is to help you increase the overall nutrition density of your meals. So we're talking about green foods are those that are low in calories, but high in nutrition. Can you think of anything that might fit that bill? Vegetables definitely fit in that category. Yes, they certainly fit in that category. We encourage participants to fill their meals with mostly green foods because they are lower in calories. You can eat a lot more and feel more full. Um, Yellow foods are going to be those that have some valuable nutrition, but they might be a little higher in fat. A great example is chicken. It's a great lean protein source, but it's not something that you should eat five or six servings of in a day. That would be too much. Can you think of anything else that might be a yellow food? Mm, those little serving, single servings of Greek yogurt, they have a lot of protein, but man, it seems like they have a lot of sugar too. That is a great example. Plain non-fat Greek yogurt is a green food because it has no added sugars, whereas um, flavored Greek yogurt, that's going to have, um, it still has some good nutrition, but it has a lot of added sugar. Um, and that can alter our taste preferences. So it is a sometimes food. So what makes a food red then? Red foods are those that have very little nutritional value and also have a lot of fat and sugar, which adds up to extra calories. So unlike many other diet programs, these foods are not off limits, but you can, you and I will work to figure out how to fit them into your day or week. So how many red foods should I be eating in a day or a week? Well, in the program, we recommend no more than 15 red foods in a week, or about two a day. So how am I supposed to know if a food is red? Great question. So we'll take a look at your food reference guide. Um, there are cutoff tables. Um, in general, a food is a green if it has less than two grams of fat per serving. Okay. Yellow have two to five grams of fat and reds have greater than five grams of fat per serving. So remember when we discussed servings versus portions? Mm -hmm. When categorizing foods, we are always going to use the, the standard serving size as indicated on the nutrition facts label. There are also specific cutoff tables for certain foods that need additional considerations, like added sugars and dairy products, like the Greek yogurt. Um, for those, you will use the dairy product cutoff table. What other foods might have a lot of added sugars? I will give you a hint. We often eat them at breakfast. Mm, cereals? Exactly. Cereals and grains are another item that we need to take sugar content into account. So in general, if a cereal or grain has less than 2 grams of fat and less than 4 grams of sugar, it is a green. Yellows have between 2 and 5 grams of fat and 4 and 8 grams of sugar per serving. Reds have greater than 5 grams of fat and more than 8 grams of sugar per serving. Okay. So you also mentioned yogurts. Those seem to have a lot of sugar even when they're plain. Yes, that can be a bit confusing because dairy products have some naturally occurring sugars, just like fruit. The cutoff tables we use take this into account. Yogurts also come in three different standard serving sizes. So if you look at the chart, we will use the same fat content cutoffs for all yogurts, regardless of the size. But because of those naturally occurring sugars, the sugar cutoffs will depend on the serving size. So I think I understand. Can we work through some real life examples? I think that'll help me understand better. Of course. So let's start with this box of crackers. Okay. So Triscuits, um, serving size is six crackers. Calories per serving is 120. And total fat is four grams, so it's yellow. Great. All right, let's make it a bit harder with something that has added sugars. How about the cereal? Okay. Um, let's see here. The serving size is three quarters cups. 
The total fat is 1.5 grams and the sugars are six. So if I look at my chart, it's a yellow. Great, I'm glad you understand that you always go with the highest category if the two could fall into two different categories. Okay, last one. Let's try one of those yogurts. This time you need to take the serving size, fat content, and sugar content and all into account. Okay, so let's see here. This is a six ounce container of yogurt. Um, it has 180 calories per serving, three grams of fat, and 28 grams of sugar. So, it's a red. Okay, um, based on just the fat content, it would be a yellow, but because the sugar content is so high, it's a red food. This would definitely be something I would think twice about eating. Okay, I think I understand this, but what about if a food doesn't have a nutrition facts label, like a piece of fruit or a chicken breast? That's a great question. So in general, all fruits and vegetables in their whole forms, like an apple, will always be green. Foods like meats, they don't have a food label, and we will use the standard serving size, which you can find in your food reference guide, which for meats is usually three ounces. Okay. And then look up the calories online or on a book. Uh, the food reference guide also has a cutoff table for proteins and meats along with some suggestions for what foods are green, yellow, and red. Okay, this definitely sounds like something I can do. Great, I'm so glad you feel like you're getting the hang of this.